So let's look at the system. So ICON resin infiltration is sold um, either as a mini kit, which comes with two kits, or a cube. And then you have the smooth surface kit or the interproximal kit. And what to buy honestly just depends on how much you're going to be doing this. Um, I do ICON quite a bit, so I, I buy the cube, which is a, a better value, obviously, because you're getting a, a higher volume. Um, Conversely, if, you, if you're not going to be, let's say you don't have as many patients that might need or, or, value, or need this procedure, perhaps get just a mini kit so that way your materials aren't going to expire. But if you find that you're needing more or doing more, obviously get the, the cube. Um, now, as far as icon resin infiltration for interproximal lesions, um, this is a good guide in terms of which lesions you can infiltrate. So, as we mentioned earlier, try to do lesions that are just confined to the enamel, although technically you can penetrate into the outer third of dentin. Um, I have done these. I, you know, I will admit I have had some like this that continued to grow <laughs> where it wasn't successful, so I would feel more confident in this zone. Um, Dr. Chait had expressed the same. Um, that once it passes the DJ that, DJ that he prefers just in enamel, um, that this is what I stick to. I will also admit that when if I have lesions this, this small, uh, especially in primary teeth, a lot of these I'm just treating with silver diamine fluoride, and I tend to do most of my resin infiltration in aesthetic zone, um, where there, the spots are going to be more visible, or, or if the, there is concern aesthetically for stain of SDF. Um, then I would do resin infiltration, but I, I primarily now do resin infiltration in, in the anterior. And just a little bit more of that in, turn of, in terms of ICDAS scores, um, essentially it, it, you can do, um, you can infiltrate to the outer third of dentin, however the, the key is the surface can't be cavitated. Um, and of course, it's hard to tell that in an interproximal space because um, you can't actually feel it. So that that becomes a, a judgment call. Um, so here's some other examples of that. You, it's okay to infiltrate this. You can infiltrate this. Um, but now, if you're getting into this zone, you can still infiltrate this, but you just have to be cautious because if that surface is actually cavitated, it's not not a great choice to do um, the resin infiltration. Um, just in terms of, of timing, I'm going to have to move along here because I know I have a lot of slides to get through. <laughs> but just quickly, obviously you cannot infiltrate this. <laughs> this needs traditional surgical intervention. Now, stuff like this, sure, absolutely, you can do resin infiltration here. Okay, now in terms of charting and documenting, um, DMG does have this, it's called a patient passbook. They have a little sticker that you could put if you have a paper chart. Um, it even has this little patient passport that they can keep that, that documents which teeth were treated because it's important to remember this treatment, it's radiolucent. So it's not going to show on a bite wing. So if a patient graduates or, or moves or goes to a new dentist, they need to know what surfaces were treated with re resin infiltration and not mistake it for an active carious lesion. 